life, especially the majority of us now, if not everybody so far, live in Western countries. So we struggle how to keep the faith and also uh, to, to, to face the, 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 the struggle that usually we face it daily to keep our faith, to keep our identity, to, to be true witness to the work of the Holy Spirit in our life and in the church. So this Bible study will help us to think about this and to, to know more about it and to understand the reality and the fact that in our life as a Christian, wherever we live, we are actually kind of fighter, spiritual fighter. So if we forget this fact, later on, we'll maybe do compromising with the word, which is, this is not what the Bible and Jesus and the Holy Spirit telling us. So today we will, we're going to learn very important fact that our uh, life as a Christian in the world is spiritual fight. So uh, I will give the mic to Sayyidna. Maybe we have another two minutes or more before we begin because we want as much as people can join us because we sit at two o'clock. So we now just turn two o'clock here in our time. I think in Europe, either it's eight or nine in the Middle East. I think it's uh, nine. Nine. So uh, we'll wait couple minutes five minutes until everybody maybe uh, they just settling down to open their device or to have uh, internet service so uh, we will wait so as you know we try every like maybe season to have uh, a very global let's say Bible study to invite everybody everywhere. So that's why we do it in our time here. It's two o'clock p.m. So it's like uh, mid of the day. Uh, but uh, usually we do our Bible study at 8.30 every Tuesday. The reason we do it this way because we want everybody and also we're doing, we're doing it on the weekend. So we want the majority of our youth, everybody, the people who really are thirsty to hear the word of God and to learn more about the Bible. Uh, we do like every couple months, every three months or so, or any spiritual season, we do uh, this global Bible study. So we had a couple time with uh, Sayyidina Matthias, Sayyidina Jack, uh, of course, Sayyidina John, he's always uh, there because he is uh, our beloved bishop. And we had the uh, too many people speaking, but now uh, uh, we have very special guest, Abuna Joseph. So we, uh, the reason also we have this topic because now we are in the holy season of the Great Lent, which is we know when somebody tried to fast and to be closer to God, uh, the evil one won't be just like sitting and watch anybody who is uh, striving in his or her spiritual life uh, to keep in, to keep him or herself in good spiritual shape. So that's why uh, Abuna Joseph uh, picked this, this topic. So we ask God to guide him while he's talking and to be with all of us, to be as... Uh, as good as we can to hear what the Lord will deliver through him to all of us. Uh, I will give the mic to Sayyidna, even I'm, I'm still convinced to have another two minutes before we'll give uh, the mic to Sayyidna to say a prayer and then to introduce Abuna Joseph to all of us because I'm seeing people still signing in. So uh, anyway, if anybody has any idea, anything we can share, we can talk about, please, now we have two minutes, 
because maybe by the end we won't have uh, enough time. So if there is anything, you can just please go ahead. Anyway, Sayyidina Jan Balakhmor, please. Uh, Hello, and uh, greetings to all of you. I miss you. Uh, it has been a long time. I didn't uh, participate with you in any of our uh, lovely Bible study. Uh, today, uh, I cannot but to participate because uh, the speaker is uh, my uh, dear friend, Abuna Joseph. And I think all of you, you know him very well. Uh, I asked to introduce him, but uh, I really need a very long uh, list to introduce Abuna Joseph. So I, I will be brief. Uh, Abuna Joseph, of course, he is one of our lovely monks and he's a priest. He is in the secretary since his enthronement in 2014. Of course, born in Lebanon. I'm not going to say the year. Uh, he. Uh, <laughs> He studied, uh, uh, he has a master's degree in philosophy from uh, the American U University of Beirut. So he speaks Arabic very well, and beside uh, some English and a little bit of French. And somehow he can manage to speak Greek. So let me tell you that he speaks five languages. I, I speak five languages, but I cannot compare myself to him because he speak, write, and uh, of course, read fluently the five languages. And after uh, uh, being done with uh, his uh, American University, he, he, he became one of our seminarian. He finished his uh, diploma in theology uh, from uh, St. Ephraim uh, Seminary in Maharet Sinai, Syria, Damascus, or Damascus, uh, Syria. And please don't ask me because I don't know how he managed to finish his PhD from uh, Greece. I don't know, but he's done. And Haram, it was only, they call it in, uh, they call it the degree in, in Latin, summa cum laude, yani more than excellent. I don't know how, because, uh, and I will finish with uh, what I'm going to say right now. Abuna Joseph, he works for only 48 hours every day. So Abuna, uh, we love you. And I'm so happy to have you with us today. And if Abuna Andrew doesn't mind, I would love to start with a short prayer. Almighty Lord, we thank you as always for being with us, guiding us, strengthening us, and helping us through our spiritual endeavor. Lord, during the Holy Land, we, we, we thank you uh, in a special way for always giving us the strength to, to fight with uh, any spiritual uh, uh, fighting we have. And, and Lord, we ask you to enlighten our minds and uh, encouraging us to, to walk always in your path. Lord, all we need is to be with you. All we need is to be saved and be at your right hand. So we are also convinced that we cannot do it by our own force. So please help us with your Holy Spirit and with your presence to achieve our goal and to be always with you and let us please be witnesses to you in this world. We thank you for uh, our gathering of today. As for all the gathering we are doing every Tuesday, we thank you for our speaker and we ask you Lord to bless him and give him wisdom to speak to us from your holy words. Lord, all of us, we raise our voices and we say to you in your language, Abun Bashmayo, Netqada Shishmoh, Tithe Merkuthoh, 
نهوى صبيونوخ هي كانت بشماي وبرعو هبلاء لحمو الصنقونان يومون وشبق لان حوبين وحطوين هي كانت بحنا جباق الحايبين لو تعالى نسين ويلو فاصولا من بيشو ميتو ديلو خيملكوثو حايلو تشبحتو العولم والمين آمين and uh, I apologize because I have to leave you uh, many of you know that his owner is in America and I have to uh, uh, accompany him to the airport. So please pray for me and for his holiness. And Abuna Joseph, thank you very much. Tawjisagi, and the floor is yours. Barakhmur Sayyidna Tawjisagi, Barakhmur Abuna Andrew, and Barakhmur Kul Abuna, Yale Kun Mana. Thank you all for. Uh, allowing me to be part of uh, your uh, spiritual gatherings and uh, the lectures that uh, are being given uh, at the Archdiocese for the youth and uh, these Bible studies that are very enriching and very uh, needed, very much needed uh, for the youth and also for uh, us, for everybody. Uh, as Abuna mentioned, uh, I tried to find uh, a topic that is uh, popular, let's say, uh, by the youth. And uh, it has been a while since uh, many people are asking me about this particular thing, uh, the spiritual warfare. And uh, I don't like to uh, just speak about warfare. I prefer to speak about uh, God's warrior in a spiritual warfare. So uh, let's say, the, I'll be talking about both the warfare itself and what we should do, what, how are we to approach a spiritual warfare. When uh, King David, when he was still David the shepherd, attacked Goliath, uh, he said, you come against me with the sword, spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies the God of the armies of Israel, who have been, whom you have defied. We are at war. And this verse from uh, 1 Samuel uh, 1745 comes to my mind. I want to explain at the beginning, uh, uh, let's analyze the elements of war. What is involved in a war? War is a conflict between armies, at least two armies. And uh, in a spiritual war, there are two armies, the children of God versus uh, the army of the devil and the evil one and his powers. And it is specifically because we are the children of God that we are attacked and that we are at this war. We are fighting spirits, not flesh, but spirits in the spiritual war. As uh, St. Paul mentions in Ephesians, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. But armies fight for a cause. And who are we fighting? for we are fighting for our heavenly country we are fighting for the kingdom of god we are fighting for our lord because he is to be targeted by these warfare the devil is not interested in each one of us but the devil is interested in breaking god's heart in fighting the lord with us by making us fall in the battlefield. Uh, the battle between the devil and the Lord has been won. It started, let's say, for example, the uh, temptation when uh, the devil tempted the Lord Jesus in the desert. This was a warfare and the devil left Jesus for a while. Then also the cross was a warfare. Death was something that the devil thought that he had won, but in fact, resurrection came and, well, 
Sam, <laughs> he did not win. Uh, the devil is fighting us because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. If he destroys the temple, then the Holy Spirit will not be able to dwell in us. And then the devil thinks that he won. We are not fighting for uh, a stranger. We are fighting for our father, the Lord, to protect our kingdom, the kingdom that we will inherit, the kingdom that is promised to us by the Lord. This is why we alone cannot stand the battle. We will surely lose if we try to fight by ourselves, but we should fight in the Lord as God's warriors. Another element of uh, warfare is the battlefield. Uh, in the battle, there is a field where the conflict takes place. There is a land where the uh, combat, the uh, fight takes place. And in the, warf in the spiritual warfare, there are three battlefields, three main battlefields that uh, the warfare takes place in. The flesh, for example, there's gluttony, adultery, uh, uh, even diseases and uh, weaknesses of the body, the loss of money, the loss of uh, the love of money and uh, the love of possession. All of these are flesh related uh, war in the spiritual warfare. Also, the mind can be a battlefield evil thoughts, lust, uh, pride, blasphemy, doubt. These are uh, fights taking place in the mind, basically. Also, we should not neglect the outer uh, battlefield, which is society or friends, where egoism takes place, where jealousy is, uh, is uh, a matter, where gossip can be a real challenge and uh, we fall into uh, the warfare in such a group, in such a battlefield. Another thing that warriors take into account in a, in a war is the timing, when to attack, when an attack is taking place, how to uh, choose the correct time. Uh, the devil started since the beginning with, with Adam and Eve. He started, he wanted to lure them into rebellion. He wanted to teach them pride. Uh, he wanted to teach them to go against uh, the Lord's command. And since then, the devil is a roaring lion, St. Uh, Peter says. He's uh, looking for uh, a prey to devour. But in this particular context, we are living in the time of Lent. And I would like to point out that a particular thing about the timing of warfare is that the devil chooses a beginning. When you start to have a new resolution, for example, I take this opportunity of the Lent to start uh, anew, to... Uh, uh, work on my, uh, I don't know, some virtue to, to acquire or uh, to work on uh, a certain spiritual uh, disease I have and want to be cured from. He starts from the very beginning. At the very beginning of such a resolution, uh, the devil wants you to fall. When you decide to get rid of a habit or to, to repent or, for example, to go to confession, the devil starts putting ideas to stop you from that because at the very beginning, he wants to put his hand or you know, control uh, our tendency, our uh, really uh, uh, resolution to go back to the Lord and take refuge in the Lord. When we are reluctant in uh, confession. This is where, you know, many of us uh, probably have uh, a problem. Uh, I don't trust the priest. Uh, I'm ashamed of my sin. By the way, 
we all have basically the same sins. There is, uh, there are kinds of sins that are repeated and uh, really the devil is not creative enough to have new sins in everybody, but uh, they come with a different emballage, with a different uh, cover, but basically the sins are the same. Also, uh, the devil can trick us and works hard on the timing of uh, after confession. He works hard to uh, let us fall just after we confess because when we have confessed, we feel that there you go. God's mercy is big, is great. And God's mercy is so great that uh, I have confessed and I have received his mercies. Praise be the Lord. But the devil comes and says, there you go, you fall back into the same sin or you you uh, are desperate. You should uh, quit confessing because you're not getting anywhere. The devil works on making us uh, feel despair so that we feel that we are weak, powerless, and that we quit taking refuge in the Lord and fighting for him. Also, when you, when you decide to start reading the Bible, then the devil strikes with doubt, with conflicting ideas, with uh, uncertainty. We start seeing things in the Bible that we don't understand. Instead of looking at it with the eye of faith, we uh, fall into doubt, which is uh, not a healthy thing. Uh, in this case, this is not the doubt that leads to faith, but doubt that leads you out of faith. And by the way, uh, the, the devil knows the Bible very well. And uh, he tries to trick us into believing that there are conflicting ideas. But we should always keep in mind that uh, the Bible should be read in the spirit of the Bible, not word, because the word kills, but the spirit revives. In a war, uh, there is strategy. You know, the commanders of war use strategy to attack and uh, how to uh, let the enemy fall. The devil also has the same thing. This is why we should know our enemy. The devil has a pattern. He fights the strong and uh, tries to keep us away from thanksgiving. He tries, tries to lure us into pride instead of humility. He gives us the illusion uh, that he should be feared and uh, so that we submit because we feel that we are powerless. He gives the illusion that uh, people are our, our enemy. But in truth, people are not our enemy. It's uh, him, the devil, that is the enemy. Uh, you know, teenagers and uh, especially uh, at ages uh, uh, where a young person is uh, forming their personality or something, they think that everyone is against them. Every, everyone is their enemy. They don't understand us. But in truth, they would be their own enemy. Uh, the feeling of hatred that accumulates when uh, we think that a person is our enemy is exactly what the devil wants us to have because this is how we are used by the devil to stumble each other. If I get nervous, then... Uh, people get mad at me instead of being mad of, at the reason that uh, is behind me being nervous or uh, anxious or angry or any of this. The devil is uh, very tricky and very good at lies. He's a liar and the father of liars. So he works on uh, putting in our mind an illusion that we lost the battle. Better than that, he also 
could work on a strategy using an illusion that we have won the battle, that uh, I'm strong enough to win this spiritual war and I have won it. But then comes pride, which is a uh, even worse uh, fight and battle than uh, any other thing maybe that we are going through. Uh, even uh, the devil could be working on uh, illusion that we are doing this for the benefit of all or for example a person uh, working as a minister in the church or uh, you know serving youth it could be any one of us that would think okay th I'm doing this for the good of the book of the church of the community but remember, St. Peter, uh, the Lord told him, get away from me, Satan. The Lord said this to St. Peter when St. Peter said to him that let us not go to the cross, but let's get away from the crowds and from the plan of the Jews. Every time the devil uh, tricks us into thinking that something wrong that we're doing is for the benefit of uh, the church we are doing the same we are ignoring the cross which is a necessary stage a necessary uh, step in salvation and we are taking our own desires our own uh, perspective uh, about salvation that we think is to be done instead of accepting the Lord's will and the Lord's plan for us. As I said, uh, the devil is very good at lies. He can uh, give us a justification for our sin. He can uh, come with excuses for why we should do this wrong thing and lure us and uh, tempt us into doing something wrong that we know is wrong instead of being truthful and being honest. Most of the time we say that, uh, okay, this is a white lie, but in fact, there is no white lie. A lie is a lie. And uh, a white lie is just an excuse for uh, continuing a bad habit, which is lie and as i said uh, the devil is the father of liars as saint john says and uh, he tries to deceive deceive even the elect uh, sometimes the devil brings a disguised uh, sin and uh, tricks uh, us into doubting whether this is even a sin or not for example, uh, he brings a, a cheating as something smart, as something cunning and wise. Sometimes uh, one would be mocking someone, somebody else and uh, it is brought forward as something funny instead of uh, uh, seeing the harm that this could do to another person. Even heresy is presented sometimes as orthodoxy, as the correct teaching of the church, as the correct teaching of the Lord, but it is heresy. And it is, as uh, the Lord says, it's uh, the wolves coming in uh, the cloth of sheep. Of sheep. Um, anger is presented as holy zeal over the house of the Lord. Uh, even for shamoshes, uh, sometimes you have a beautiful voice and the beautiful voice is uh, trick, we're tricked by the devil to think that the beautiful voice is really a prayerful heart, but in truth, it's uh, a reason for us to be proud and to fall into uh, arrogance instead of really using this talent for the service of the Lord. Sometimes Doubt is presented as critical thinking. Oh, I should question everything. I should, uh, I should use the mind that is given by God to think everything.
true. Faith should be well-founded, but doubt sometimes, which is not a doubt like, let's say, St. Thomas's doubt, who sought confirmation of his faith, but doubt that is to negate faith leads to despair, leads, it drives us away from uh, repentance, from uh, going in the path of repentance and uh, confessing. Doubt sometimes uh, leads us to questioning uh, the very foundation of our faith, which is the faith in the mercy of God. This is the rock that uh, 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 the Lord told Peter, uh, he is the rock, he is the foundation, because he proclaimed that you are Christ, and by proclaiming this, he proclaimed the faith and the mercy of God, that God is really uh, uh, visiting his people and uh, really giving them salvation. In church ministry and uh, in the services we offer, we tend to confuse ministry with leadership. Being bossy is not a, a good uh, uh, property, a good character uh, for the uh, church ministry. It's not about being bossy. It's true church leadership should be by example, should be based on kindness, on traits that the Lord portrays for all the believers, especially when you want to be a leader in the church. There's a point also that I want to mention about the uh, hiding things from the father confessor it's a way that some people use to handle things by themselves but this is also uh, a hidden a disguised sin because when we go to confession we should confess everything and we should go with a heart believing that i i leave in the hands of the lord my sins so that I get from him a complete absolution from sin. All of these are forms of uh, accepting what is wrong, accepting sin as correct, but it comes disguised because when we know that this is sin, we will not accept it, we will not do it. No one of us is going to uh, purposefully, consciously, willingly and powerfully choose to do something that is known to be a sin. So the devil tries to trick us into thinking that, uh, there you go, this is, not, mm, this is not sin properly. We should be alert about this. We should be aware of it and vigilant to uh, be able to uh, make fruits of repentance and enjoy also the forgiveness that the Lord gives us. Also, uh, we're talking about the strategies that uh, the devil uses in a warfare, in a spiritual warfare. This uh, includes the habits and addictions. Uh, in our society, we have uh, many who struggle with addictions because they get uh, hooked on things they cannot control. And at some point, they don't even try to get rid of uh, such habits and addictions. There is addictions to all sorts of things, drugs, pornography, uh, smoking, all sorts of, of things. And this is a way of making us, the children of God, slaves of things that we cannot control. And we start, you know, things uh, in chain are brought like uh, for example uh, because of an addiction there would be for example theft uh, lies uh, destruction of social activity social interaction with others all of this because of uh, a uh, uncontrolled uh, addiction and 
this is a weapon used by uh, uh, the devil to uh, control and make us slaves of uh, of him. You know, on a more uh, theoretical level, there is uh, there are concepts that the devil uses which are misunderstood most of the time because we don't have the correct, the strong uh, uh, theological foundation for them. I give an example uh, about liberty. Uh, the youth especially are uh, uh, struggling with the concept of uh, liberty, of freedom. And uh, we uh, sometimes feel that uh, anything that is uh, said to us about this is going to limit our liberty and to uh, uh, make us unfree, make us slaves. But sometimes on the contrary, uh, we should be able to understand the commandments of the Lord, see in them a way of liberation instead of seeing them as a way of uh, enslavement and uh, uh, bondage. Remember, the path of the Lord is narrow. And uh, so it is not often used by everybody because we tend to compare and say, I, I don't know how uh, I could be correct and everybody else is wrong. Usually we, we try to follow the herd and uh, do like others are doing. And uh, this is where uh, we have a false concept of democracy, for example, or uh, the false concept of uh, truth being relative or uh, uh, the truth is supported by the multitudes or by just one or two people. Uh, a technique that the devil uses is that he strikes quickly. He does that because um, he wants us to lose hope. He wants us to fall into despair. The devil does not despair. He continuously attacks us. He continuously uh, tries to make us fall. And he doesn't despair, but he wants to spread despair. He wants us to despair. Spiritual life is not for me. This is what he wants us to say. You try it once or twice to fight this uh, particular sin or... Uh, uh, a habit or something and you find you're not able to get rid of that so one loses hope and uh, stops but the devil is impatient and he doesn't want us to think this is why he strikes quickly he doesn't want us to think to seek the counsel of anybody and most importantly he doesn't want us to pray because he knows that when we pray, uh, we are becoming stronger. We become stronger because we are in communication with the Lord, with God. And then his power, the devil's power, is neutralized and he cannot do anything. So he wants us to fall immediately because he doesn't want us to seek help. And uh, he knows that if we pray, he knows the power of prayer. and. Uh, he knows that he will lose. I want to share uh, a personal tactic that I use, uh, which I think is only acceptable in spiritual warfare, not all of them, but uh, it, it can be helpful. When I am about to uh, decide about something uh, and take an action, if I feel that uh, I am stressed by a certain bad thought or uh, I'm not at peace but with deciding about something, I do what we usually do not recommend to do, procrastination. I tell myself I'm not going to decide now. I'm going to give myself time. And with time, I think, I pray, and I find myself approaching the problem differently and truly not rushing into a solution, not rushing into a decision, 
and truly thinking about it and praying. And there you go, a counseling spirit comes and uh, gives you the answer and protects you instead of uh, being rushed into a uh, decision that might, uh, that might be wrong and uh, lead into sin or into losing a battle in, uh, in the spiritual life. Sometimes the devil uh, introduces parts of a sin, just one part at a time. For example, uh, instead of uh, letting someone commit adultery, uh, the, the devil starts going into uh, uh, step by step and introducing uh, the sin into the person's mind so that uh, we don't recognize uh, the sin anymore. It is just a bad habit that took place and uh, uh, the spirit is destroyed slowly instead of uh, a quick uh, uh, loss of the battle. Um, in wars in general, there are casualties uh, that fall victims of the war. In spiritual war, the only casualty that exists is a non-repentant heart, a heart that refuses to accept the forgiveness of God. This is the only casualty that can be. And this is when the Lord says also that uh, all sins are forgiven, but the uh, uh, blasphemy over the spirit of God uh, is not forgiven. We are, as I said at the beginning, we are warriors and uh, a warrior has to uh, be armed with weapons uh, to use and weapons uh, that will help this warrior in his war. We should keep in mind that uh, the battle is not ours. The battle is the Lord's. As uh, is mentioned in uh, Book 1, Samuel uh, 17, 47. And uh, the battle is the Lord's, but also the result is known. The Lord has won the battle. He has conquered uh, the evil one. He has conquered death. And uh, there is uh, no uh, unknown result of the war. What are the weapons that we can use in uh, fighting the devil? As St. James says in his epistle, Resist the devil, resist the devil, and he will free, flee from you. He will uh, go away from you. So in the beginning, we should be alert that there is a war going on. It is serious because it affects our souls and spirits. And uh, we should be aware completely that it is uh, taking place. We should fight it by being in the church. How, what do I mean by being in the church? Being in the church, being in the ministry of the church, being servants of the church, doing charity, doing the teachings of the church. Charity is the love to one another that we can have. And by doing that, love increases. By doing that, humility increases in uh, each one of us. And by doing that, we are able to get out of our egoism, which is something that uh, the devil would be pleased with, and reach others and really give from our heart to others. We have to be hopeful always. Hopeful, it means uh, that uh, we have hope and we are full of hope. We are full of hope in the Lord, not uh, uh, any hope provided by any other uh, than the Lord. We should have the peace of the Lord. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace, as is mentioned. We should keep our joy 
rejoice in the Lord. And I say again, rejoice. We should keep a spirit of gratitude and thankfulness. This is very important because when we do not thank the Lord for his grace, for his abundant grace, we don't have a spirit of gratitude. And when we don't have a spirit of gratitude, we are really pride, full of pride, and we don't uh, uh, accept the gift of God. We should be able to uh, humbly accept the uh, gift of God and be thankful and grateful for it. Also, there is a very important term that we should use in our spiritual uh, warfare. It's discipline. We, when I talk about discipline, it's a very important uh, concept. It's not about uh, just uh, being good in uh, rituals in the church. It's not about uh, being... Uh, strict or firm with uh, something, but discipline is living the morals and values that we preach in a very convicted way, in a way that we have conviction of uh, uh, being able to live what we preach, what we learn, what we uh, teach, and in the very uh, strict sense. The St. Paul says uh, the armor of faith. Faith in what? Faith that the Lord has already won the battle, as I said. It's the Lord's battle and he has won. We have to trust the Lord. We have to take decisions with wisdom, with discernment. We have to have self-control over uh, desires and uh, lust and uh, all that uh, comes with the flesh and uh, with the mind. Fasting is a very strong tool and weapon against the devil in spiritual warfare. The Lord said, uh, this kind can come out by nothing except by prayer and fasting. This is from Mark 9.29. Fasting is a very strong weapon. And uh, uh, the Lord fasted uh, before going to ministry. And uh, when he fasted, he was able to uh, fight the temptations of the devil and win. But the strongest weapon remains humility. You can win a battle without even fighting when there is humility. With a humble heart, you don't need to fight because you have already won. Uh, the devil is defeated because of humility. And the Lord defeated uh, uh, the devil with obedience and humility. The Lord is my shield. This is what I should think when I am humble. When I am humble, I think I am weak and uh, I should confess, for example, about the confession of sins. A humble heart can go to confession. A humble heart rushes into confession. Also, as I mentioned earlier, prayer. Prayer is when a soldier talks to the commander. Uh, when a soldier talks to the general. After all, as I said, the, the battle is not ours. The war is not ours. And uh, if we trust the Lord, if we believe that uh, truly the Lord conquered death and the devil, then we should seek to know how he should lead us into uh, the victory in this war. And how do we know this? We know it by prayer and by reading the Bible. When we read the Bible and when we pray, it is our communication with the Lord and hearing how 
he will lead us out of uh, uh, this war victorious. I've come almost to the end. I'm going to summarize the points that we need uh, to, to do in our spiritual warfare. As warriors of God, we should be courageous. We should not become desperate. If the beginning is weak, remember that a cadet or a soldier start in the army with difficulties. But the struggle becomes more powerful. And the, the more struggles you have, the more uh, experience you gain. The only thing that is needed is for you to be on the correct side, on the side of the Lord, so that we can continuously win battles. Spiritual wars give us upgrades in the levels of spirituality that we have. We become from warriors to uh, captains to majors to, I don't know the ranks of the army, but we get promoted. And with promotions come new and, and more fierce battles, but do not fear. You are growing in the spirit. Do not fear. This is very important. Keep your heart with God and trust him. This is what you need to win your spiritual battles. I want to say a prayer uh, that uh, I wrote down, but uh, let me open. Uh, oh Lord Jesus Christ, you have defeated Satan and his army of evil demons. Let us have the reassurance that Elisha had uh, when he trusted that those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Open our eyes, O oh Lord, so that we can see the chariots of fire that fight and win. Give us the armor to be ready as soldiers and warriors for you. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, I think, Abuna, you give us a very uh, beautiful and uh, if anybody wants really to benefit from this topic today, Abuna, you give us a lot, a lot of good information. And I think it's, uh, it's a result of a uh, lot of spiritual warfare that he goes through or he learned so i think he's giving us beautiful and heavy good uh, food spiritual food uh, when we talk about the spiritual warfare we are not talking about how to learn the important the significant or importance of the prayer and the fast and the confession and to keep the faith and and it's not that it's more about how you live these virtues, how you apply these virtues in your life. So if anybody today here heard what Abuna said, and he know it all, we remember all the, the rich man, the ruler man, when he came to Jesus, he told him, what can I do to inherit the kingdom of God? He told him, you know, the commandment. He said, oh, I kept all this from my... Uh, childhood so Jesus told him then you need one you need to do one he said what is it he said go sell everything distribute all your position all your money and come carrying your cross and follow me then you would be able to enter so what Abuna was saying and how we leave it or how we accept that there is big big gap imagine you go to engineer tell him I want to build a house and he will tell you come in a month or so. I will give you, I don't know what we call the map. So after you take it, you cannot say I have home. The home is only a couple lines, numbers, nothing else. If you want to really have home, you have to give it to somebody to translate what is on paper to be in real. 
So what Abuna was telling us, it's spiritual experience, but it won't benefit our spiritual life unless we are deciding today to follow what he was saying. He was talking at the end. I'm very glad that he ended with this part, the whole arm of God. We know how important it is to, to, to have or to carry all this armor of God, the shield of faith, the sword of the word, all these we need it, but how we can carry it. You cannot carry it if you are not used to, to battle or you don't have intention that your life as a Christian in this world, it's a spiritual warfare. So I really thank you, Abuna and Joseph. And uh, I thank God who was speaking through you to all of us. But what Abuna was saying, it would be good and it would benefit, benefiting, benefiting us if we really can know how to apply this in our life. If we know that we as a Christian, we are called to be different if we know that we as a believer, as a children of God, as a member of this church, we are called to, to be as a light in the darkness of this world. Other word, by, by, by the way, what Abuna say, you can go read it. You can go ask somebody to tell you about it, but you're going to be like this rich man. I kept all this from my, you know, my childhood. I know all these things. Who cares if you do know, but if you don't apply. So the key here, Abuna gave us the key. If we are not going to open and we are not going to, to, to arm ourselves with intention that we ready to open and to face because without fighting, spiritually i'm talking we are not going to be elevated or to graduate from one level to another level and this is what exactly abuna was saying be proud of yourself and thank god if you are a struggle because if you are faithful and you are loyal and you try to keep the faith and to be true witness and not only that thank god because you would be count or deserve to be true child of God who follow the feet of his master. So thank you very much, Abuna Jose. If anybody has any question concerning the topic that Abuna was talking about, please go ahead. And if there is any uh, question that being written on the on the chat group Miriam can ask if not please go ahead the stage is yours now you can just open your mic say your name and ask the question to Abuna Joseph I'm saying concerning the topic that he was talking about God's warrior in the spiritual warfare Thank you for your talk. May God strengthen you. Please keep us in your prayers. It's Daniel from America. How are you? Shalom, Daniel. Thank you, Abuna. How are you? Good. Thank God. Um, Abuna, you touched on this a little bit in your talk about like um, trying to control our thoughts. Can you just like give us some techniques or strategies that you use to basically try to focus during like, like mental prayer? like during silent time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a difficult thing, actually, because usually when you want to control your uh, thoughts, the, the way, the way uh, I, I do it, when I want to control my thoughts, I impose a frequency of uh, reading or prayer uh, on my thoughts. 
uh, it's a little bit physics related when you have a certain frequency in the sound or uh, uh, or a wave or something you impose a, another frequency so that uh, that frequency that you are using is controlling actually the wave but uh, that's uh, that's a bit far uh, anyway uh, in prayer uh, something is very important uh, when our thoughts are uh, dispersed when thoughts are dispersed it's because we are thinking of something else so what do you do if uh, you read you want really to focus on something you're reading not prayer something you're reading you focus on the meaning and this is why for example uh, during lent I choose uh, prayers and try to translate them and uh, put them uh, available for others in English or in Arabic. And this is what I'm doing basically, basically daily. Uh, this is done by uh, looking at uh, the, the words and the meanings of the prayers and focusing on them. So you have to force yourself into really understanding what you're saying. Don't say it if you don't want to understand it. And this is how you control. You impose a, uh, a uh, uh, way of thinking, a way of approaching your prayer itself uh, by seeking the meaning, by seeking the beauty of the prayers, especially, you know, in, uh, in our church, we have... Uh, very rich uh, prayers, full of meaning, full of uh, simple but yet very powerful uh, uh, ideas and uh, and uh, images, typology, and uh, this is how uh, you should uh, keep your mind in the prayer by focusing on the meaning, by focusing on what is being said, what you are repeating in the prayer, and uh, you find yourself. Uh, focused on it instead of focused on uh, maybe other things uh, you know getting distracted by anything else in prayer thank you abuna sure. um i received yes. a question she wants to stay anonymous she's asking how can we bring back those who fall in marijuana addiction yeah, uh, addiction, whether it is uh, uh, consumption of uh, drugs or any other uh, form of addiction is a very serious and uh, delicate subject as well. Um, uh, there is no one uh, answer for that. I, you know, probably this person also knows that. Uh, but I find loving uh, uh, someone uh, truly and uh, with a with a pure heart uh, being there for them not judging them being there for them being uh, strongly there for them giving from our time from our energy and praying for them is the answer uh, again it, it varies a lot uh, Mild addictions uh, can be sometimes more difficult to treat than uh, than strong addiction, uh, but uh, there is no more powerful weapon than prayer and uh, and love, and this is uh, basically this is how miracles are done. Uh, we also have another uh, anonymous question. Uh, is there any connection between flesh and the spirit? So like if we mm, whole the body by fasting during Lent, uh, like mm. are we living kind of like the life of monks? Mm -hmm. That's the question. Uh, you know, there is a very beautiful image that the uh, fathers of the desert give uh, about uh, fasting. Uh, it's uh, when your uh, uh, body is weak, then the spirit can fly high. 
It's a comparison they give, uh, which is uh, basically uh, uh, saying that when you control your body, it's not about, uh, you know, uh, just fasting from food. You know, uh, the whole length we are praying about uh, the fasting of the tongue, of what we say, because uh, speech and words can be uh, more hurtful than uh, than harmful, I mean, than uh, maybe eating, uh, eating, uh, not fasting food. Uh, uh, the weaker the body, the more focused you are on your spiritual, uh, on the mind and on the spiritual uh, thoughts. Um, Fasting is an, the Lent is an opportunity. It's not the norm. After Lent, uh, then again, the flesh is uh, going to be stronger or, uh, or more powerful and uh, take over the spirit. No, of course not. But it's a training. It's also good uh, the same way that uh, a uh, detox is good also for uh, the body. This is a period. Lent is a period and fasting is a period where you are aware that you are getting uh, away from something or you are uh, losing uh, something. You are not eating a, a particular thing for the Lord. It's not uh, a diet. It's not a nutrition-based uh, 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 choice. It's a choice because I'm getting uh, rid of something or I'm, uh, I'm not opting for something for the Lord. Because it has this basis, then the flesh becomes weaker and the spirit becomes uh, stronger. Claudia Buna. Claudia Buna, we have uh, one more question. It's from Eli Safar. He's saying, Barak Buna Buna, you talked about the devil strikes fast and wants us to act fast without thinking, praying or asking anyone's advice. Then you said something of, that we procrastinate. Could you explain more about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, what I meant is not, I'm not really encouraging a general law of procrastina procrastination in our lives. Uh, postponing things from uh, from their deadline is not a good thing uh, and uh, but what i'm saying is the following if i'm facing a certain situation where i, where I have to decide what to do and uh, this decision is not uh, i'm not at peace with it i'm i feel it's wrong i don't know if it is wrong or uh, if this is the true decision, I'm confused about it. Confusion is not something from the Lord. The Lord gives us a, a straightforward uh, spirit of uh, knowing and of peace. I'm not at peace with it. So what do I do? What shall I do? What I do is, okay, I postpone it. I uh, say to myself, I'm not going to fight this uh, idea more i'm not going to spend more uh, energy on this i'm going to postpone my decision till later and i find myself able to formulate able to uh, find a uh, balanced uh, decision i can see more perspectives and uh, more uh, the, the matter i can see it from different perspectives and then i can form a better choice and uh, i can make a better decision so by gaining by accepting not to be rushed into a decision i gain time so that i can pray i can meditate i can read the bible see what the lord speaks to me about this and then make a more uh, learned decision. Taudia uh, Buna, we have a question uh, that is, I think, very common in our youth. Mm -hmm. uh, is a confession, Father, important to one's spiritual life? And if yes, this person feels it is not being implemented into our church enough. 
The first part I understood, but the second part, if yes, what? Why, why is it not being implemented into our church enough oh. that a confession father is really important mm. to our spiritual mm. This is a question that is often repeated in uh, youth uh, meetings and uh, youth Bible studies. A confessing father, a father confessor is very important. Uh, in the spiritual uh, world, uh, it's like a nanny. <laughs> uh, he can be a doctor, he can be a companion even uh, in certain cases. Um, if we think that we have reached the full uh, size of Christ, we're, we're, we're very wrong about this. We are still very young, very, uh, we are children really in uh, spirituality. And this is why we need to learn you go to school when you are a child and a father confessor is someone who uh, is a teacher also. You uh, go to the doctor when you have, uh, when something is wrong, when you have a disease, when, you have, when you're not feeling well. And this is why, where a father confessor comes in as well in the spiritual life of each one of us. Uh, unfortunately, uh, a father confessor uh, has requirements if you want and uh, in my opinion the most important requirement for a father confessor is that uh, he should be he should lead by example if I don't see a praying person in the father of confession, confession I will not go if I don't see a person who touches upon spirituality who comes near a uh, good spiritual life, I will not be encouraged to, do, uh, to go to that person and to confess. Unfortunately, this is um, also a trick if you want, from the devil because uh, one would be surprised how the Lord uses anyone, everyone, anyone and everyone for his glory and when i go with a confessing heart with a, with a humble spirit it could be that a secular person could teach me and could guide me in my spiritual uh, life even more than a, uh, a priest so the most important thing is to be aware that my spiritual guide uh, should be I should open my ears to a uh, to the Lord's word by any person that the Lord puts uh, in my life to guide me. But confession is strictly uh, related to a priest, and uh, I should not be stopped from confessing my sins because of uh, my inability to see the grace of God in the priesthood of a person. Confessing is important. It is important for me to heal from the wounds of my sin. And this is what should take me uh, to the confessional uh, seat, confessional chair. It is very tricky. It's very delicate also. Um, I don't know how to say it in a, in a uh, simple way, but uh, let's say that uh, it's, a, it's both ways. Uh, we, the clergy, are to be blamed, but also the people uh, should be more encouraged to go uh, to the Lord, seek the Lord in this priest and the other priest, because there you will find him, waiting for you and uh, ready to help you. Thank you, Abuna. Thank you all for Dar, your Abuna. question. Uh, since Abuna, he already prayed when he ended up his uh, 
uh, lecture or his Bible study. So we are going all to recite the Lord's Prayer in Sirioyo. So that will be uh, the, the prayer to end up with. Meanwhile, I really thank you, Abuna, for your uh, uh, beautiful word. I pray that what we learn, what we heard, it would be a real spiritual tools and grace in our life. So let's all of us please uh, uh, pray the Lord's Prayer in Surya, you sing together. Abunit Beshmayo, Nitra Dash Moh, Ethe Melkuthor, Nehwes of your nose, I can it Beshmayo, Baro, Hablan Lahmut Sunkon and Yo Mono, Wishbuklan, Haubain, Wahbohain, I can a dof Hanan, Shbakal Hayobain, Lo Talan is Yuno, Elo Fas Olan Mendisho. يطول بلوخ ملكوثه حيلو تشبه العالم والمين أمين بارخ مور أبونا بارخ مور تودي to all of you and uh, hope we can meet this coming Tuesday at 8.30 uh, in New York uh, Eastern of uh, United States time thank you again keep us all in your prayer Abuna and we thank the work of the Holy Spirit with you. And we ask the Lord to be with you and to help you all the days of your life. Taudi. Taudi Abuna. Taudi. Thank you. We have people from everywhere. Thank you for participating. And thank you for making time and effort to attend the Bible study tonight. Taudi, thank you very much. Thank you. Taudi. 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 Taudi.